I loved all the other talks, all the all the things there. And especially since everybody who was talking is a collaborator of mine, I wholeheartedly agree with everything they were saying, including some of the ways they were even like creatively challenging each other. I will show one slide here, which is I, I do want to, this is also partly acknowledging some of the people who made today's event possible and actionable. Here's a paper that a number of us wrote, but in particular, like the, the student postdoc organizers, uh, Katie Collins, Lance Ying, and Proffel. I want you guys to make sure you get enough credit. So you folks wave so that everybody knows who you are. <laughs> uh, they, they, were, they were really the people who put this together. And they also, with others, led this paper. Jacob, Francois, a lot of us participated in this. This is just a position paper which, which tries to articulate some of the reasons that I think are shared in this group for why we're interested in using games as a benchmark. And again, I'm so glad that we have Jeannie and Laura here because there is so much more to human intelligence than playing games. And I love how deadly serious Laura is when she reminds us of that. <laughs> um, but I will just say, I encourage you to check out this paper and see some of the things that, that uh, we talk about here. These are examples of some of the game benchmarks, but I think other things that this paper does talk about, which are worth checking into the conversation and relates to some of the stuff Jacob was talking about. It's just the, even in the limited world of video games, how much sort of hierarchical structure, like when we talk about does a system have a world model, what is a world model, it's not just like what is the model of the world in front of me right now, but it's multiple levels of abstraction that can be probed in terms of like how do we rapidly learn efficiently to perform a new task in the domain, but also how do we robustly transfer to new settings of those tasks and domains, adapting and reusing our knowledge, and then how do we transfer across tasks and domains. These are things which can be captured in another, I guess, kind of old school set of ideas. This is a picture that kind of throws back to work that we did 20 years ago in when we talked about before there was theory-based reinforcement learning, as Sam talked about, there was theory-based Bayesian models of cognition. And the idea that you could have like a hierarchy of hypothesis spaces and priors that could capture knowledge about the world at different grains of abstraction. And what is essential about human world model building is learning and inference at all these levels. And the things that Jacob was talking about, we're talking about like different levels of abstraction, but also confidence in knowing what you know and not and knowing what you don't know and calibrating your understanding in terms of this hierarchy of knowledge. I just want to remind all of us that when we're thinking about games, we ought to think about that. And what's really nice and valuable about like, you know, many games that are built by real game designers trying to achieve like these funness metrics and or, you know, the things that you guys were talking about, which I think are are good ideas about how to measure fun because they are also old ones. Like every, every, game designers have known those kind of things about how to maximize engagement for a while. Trying to formalize and understand how those relate to things like human notions of fun are important. But the ways that good games present challenges within a level, across levels, across multiple kinds of games of new types, like people will often play a new game because it's like kinds of games they played before, but oh, but it has this new twist. And so that it's the, one of the small things that games give us is the ability to test and probe and engage how we build understanding across different levels. In this paper, we also talk about how you might generate novelty. And this is both how people who want to benchmark AI might think about generating novel games in terms of all sorts of ways of varying and recombining motifs from others. But that also engages with the, the things that Juni was talking about and that Laura in her joint work with Juni and others also have engaged, which is like what is actually <laughs> at stake when we talk about problems and human goals is not just and maybe not even most interestingly problem solving, but problem making. So the fact that we can think about how to create new games, new problems, new games allow us, give us a way to benchmark, if you like, human or human like machine systems in thinking about problem making and not just problem solving. And the last thing is I'll just highlight some of the work that Katie has led. This is a first slide of a slide that, of a talk that you can watch online. I've noticed that lots of, I, I hope it's okay to advertise it. Yeah, I'm not gonna say anything more than this, but just check out this talk that Katie gave to some of the world's top mathematicians at a conference on AI and math, in which she was talking about work that she and others have done. 
that, you know, in some sense it kind of goes in the opposite direction of what Laura was talking about, but I would say it's actually in the same direction. Instead of taking some of these themes down to, um, you know, uh, what you see in like a very young child playing around the home, Katie is taking these ideas to the most what is often considered the most elite level of human intellectual activity, like advancing fundamental mathematics, proving theorems, answering questions about the most abstract ideas that humans over thousands of years have come up with. And one of the things that is inspiring to us is the way when mathematicians think about how they prove a theorem or even formulate a research program, and it has so much deeply in common with how the youngest children that Laura was showing us. Like there's a notion of play, which involves thinking not just how do I follow the rules, but how do I break or change the rules? What games are even worth playing? Katie in this talk shows how you can actually build models. I mean, it's again, these are very small steps, but towards how do you take notions of thinking about what problems are worth solving? What is fun? What is a good bet to make? and shows how we've studied this in, a, in classes of board games, but sort of tries to draw out some of the relevant themes that would take you to the ways that mathematicians have tackled some of the hardest frontier questions of human understanding in the oldest places where we've tried to achieve understanding of our own thinking, which is in mathematics. So anyway, I just encourage you to watch that, and um, I think with that, I'll just stop, and we can have a panel and discuss all of these themes. Thanks. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Josh.